And how often did you talk with her about her experiences in Ukraine? About the whole she doesn't want to talk about it. We almost never talked about it. It's only in these senior years, now that she's in her 80s, that we can pry, because her younger children are, of course, very interested, you know, in, 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 uh, in this. So Victor might dig out a piece of information that he'll then phone me and share with me, you know, or I might dig something and tell him. I tell him, Vic, my strategy with the cat is working. She loves the kitten, you know. He says, congratulations. Well, how how did you do it? <laughs> How did you get by Jacob, you know? So now we have a bunny and we have a kitten, you know, and uh, so uh, we, they do not voluntarily, you have to pry it and even then you do not get the full picture. Possibly two reasons. One would be uh, the repression of the thoughts of the experience of the child that they don't want to relive it. You know, to, to talk about it is you have to relive those emotions. That's one reason. The other is the political environment. You know, Ukrainians have to be, have always been uh, all that Russian occupation, Soviet, uh, you don't talk. Your, your kids will report you. Your, your kids will rat out the parents to the state. And the state will come and put, the, put them in a labor camp. <coughs> you know, the gulags and all that garbage. You know, the the Soviet Union was built by prisoners wrongly convicted on trumped up charges for saying something that should be a human right, you know. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's not like that and you wind up in prison. And When I went to Ukraine the first time, I was overwhelmed by, by that fact. People, neighbors, they would have get-togethers, they would invite you to sit down at the dining table. You know, they love to eat and celebrate. And almost every time, conversation would go back to a time when somebody was in Siberia or had been arrested, you know.